Chapter 12. The Illusion of Control. During the epidemic we were told repeatedly that mass gatherings and the loosening of lockdown screws would result in more COVID cases, more deaths, a surge, another wave, a tsunami, a worst case scenario. Disaster was always around the corner, or in two weeks. By the time we were around the corner, or the fortnight had elapsed, we were on to the next crisis. Here are nine times that the doom-mongering modelers and the pessimistic politicians and pundits told the people of the UK that they would cause disaster and death during 2020. The 8th of May, VE Day. Despite being urged to stay at home, people held socially distant street gatherings for VE Day, braving the UK media's disapprobation. Villages in Grappen Hall were described as breathtakingly stupid for performing a socially distanced conga holding a rope marked at two meter intervals. A local journalist commented that the best thing the Grappen Hall conga line could have done was to keep on dancing all the way down Nutsford Road to Warrington Hospital. Yet they must have found their way home, as there were no COVID deaths in the local hospital over the next several weeks. The 26th of May, Bank Holiday. Tourism bosses and local authorities, panicked by the beautiful weather forecasts, warned people to stay at home for the bank holiday. Merseyside employed a charming, wish you weren't here, campaign. Perhaps the high temperatures and fresh air weren't conducive to disease transmission, no spike in deaths followed. The 16th of May onwards, anti-lockdown protests. Anti-lockdown protests inspired outrage. People who attended were labeled, idiots, and, selfish anti-lockdown morons who would, put everyone at risk. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, branded anti-lockdown protests, unacceptable. There was no discernible impact on deaths. The 31st of May onwards, Black Lives Matter, protests. Many thousands took to the streets in a series of protests over the death of George Floyd and in support of Black Lives Matter. This time, politicians, the police and media were fairly quiet about the risk of spreading COVID. Sadiq Khan said, to the thousands of Londoners who protested peacefully today, I stand with you. An article in The Guardian claimed that the mobility of crowds and mask wearing reduced risk. One study, reported in The Independent, went further and said the protests helped increase social distancing behaviors. However, the science must have changed, as Priti Patel, Home Secretary, said in November that she would like to ban protests of more than two people. The 25th of June, Bournemouth Beach. A major incident was declared at Bournemouth Beach on the 25th of June. There were half a million visitors in Dorset, roads were gridlocked and the beaches were full. Local MP Tobias Elwood said that people were being selfish and also acting dangerously. Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty responded to the beach scenes by saying that COVID cases would rise Argoran. They didn't. Eventually, by mid-February 2021, Mark Woolhouse, Professor of Infectious Disease Epidemiology at the University of Edinburgh, told the Science and Technology Committee in the House of Commons that no outbreaks of COVID had been linked to a beach so far. The 4th of July, Super Saturday. Dubbed, UK's Independence Day, or, Super Saturday, the 4th of July was the day that pubs reopened in Britain. Places of worship opened too, but people seemed more cross about the pubs. Predictably, news stories on the 5th of July contained photographs of crowded streets of drunken idiots. While most of Britain probably celebrated sensibly, one police officer claimed to have dealt with naked men, happy drunks, angry drunks, fights and more drunks. Saturday night then. Welcome to the second wave, one furious commentator said. There was no impact on cases or deaths associated with Super Saturday. September. Back to school and university. Academics and unions warned that students preparing to return to university were risking a public health crisis and that we were, weeks away, from, sleepwalking into a disaster. They also grumbled that plans to make schools, COVID secure, were, unviable. In line with Fresh's flu and back-to-school sniffles, cases of COVID undeniably rose in September although deaths remained low. Christmas. Neil Ferguson of Imperial College warned that households mixing, risks some transmission and there will be consequences of that. Some people will die because of getting infected on that day. Happy Christmas to you too, Neil. Susan Mitchie said, if we really want to keep our loved ones safe, the best thing is not to see them. And Anochka Gross wrote in The Guardian that, anybody with any kind of conscience is beating their brain, calculating all eventually. Ties that may result from showing up for lunch in a week's time, one of which involves inadvertently killing your aged parents.
UK deaths within 28 days of positive test by date of death. Just a couple of weeks after Ferguson's predictions, the UK government changed its plans to relax social restrictions for Christmas due to a new infectious and rapid spreading strain which was, was out of control. According to the Office for National Statistics, around half of the people who were allowed to meet for Christmas did so. There was a spike in infections at Christmas, but unrelated to Christmas itself. Paul Hunter, a professor at the University of East Anglia's medical school, said, I actually can't see any convincing evidence that Christmas actually did anything to make things worse at all, in an analysis for the BBC. Back to school again. By now you know the script. Some experts were worried that when pupils returned to school, COVID cases would go up. It was almost as though all their previous predictions had been true rather than false, such was the confidence. Also, it was as though the UK had not rolled out a successful vaccination program, and that spring was in the air. Professor John Edmonds of SAGE warned that, it looks as if it would be touch and go, and that, if we opened secondary schools and primary schools both at the same time, I suspect we would be lucky to keep the reproduction number below one. There was a slowdown in the fall in cases attributed to the return to school, although this was thought to be due to the increased mass LFT testing in schools. Once again, there was no catastrophic effect on cases, deaths or are in a twist on the game, pin the tail on the donkey, see if you can locate the super spreader events on the graph of COVID deaths and discern any impact. Then see if you can pinpoint the following interventions, lockdown 1.0, masks on transport, masks in shops, rule of six, lockdown 2.0, tier restrictions or lockdown 3.0. Has the illusion of control exaggerated our belief that we can control the course of a virus? The attitudes towards people who would gather and mingle are definitely not illusory. Journalists, politicians and the public condemned and sneered at ordinary people they described as covidios and selfish. This created social division, shame, anger and more fear. People are more likely to assume responsibility when things go right, and less responsibility when things go wrong so perhaps they simply need scapegoats lined up for the crisis around the corner.